Ooh. 
Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. A very pleasant morning to everyone this blessed morning this blessed Saturday morning as we have come together to celebrate the life of Emery Madge Blake I would invite you now to relax grieve as you must but we are a people with hope that one day we will see our mother, our friend, our sister, our cousin, our aunt again. Do you believe this? Thank you very much. So at this time, I'm going to invite us to put our phones on silent, if you can, or turn them off. And I would invite those who are going to do the tributes. I will not announce it again. It's Maurice Coke. Is Maurice here? Thank you. Uh, Tara Blake and Matthew Turner. And Major Hugh Blake. So we'll start off with Maurice Coke, and we use this lectern here, please. Thank you. Good morning, good morning, good morning. My name is Cleve Weber, and I'm a nephew of their Aunt Madge. And um, I know it's, you know, funerals are not always pleasant, but at this time I'd like to uh, bring condolences for my family, myself, my wife, um, my daughter Sophia, my son Kahari, and Omri, 
and other members of my family to the dearly beloved family. Um, David, Hugh, Colin, Andre, Valerie, and of course the spouses and other members of the family. I am extremely sorry for your passing and I'm on with you. I've been there. At this time, I'd like to read a poem which is uh, entitled Journey, because I think this life is really about a journey. And um, this poem was actually written by um, Easton Lee, very famous uh, Jamaican author. And uh, it goes like this. I enter this world, not of my own choosing, somewhere, somehow, someone dictated what my body, what form my body would take, what color, my eyes, hair, skin, how tall, what weight, what joys I would know, what pain I would endure, what songs my soul would sing, and what turbulent waters I would cross to reach the shore. Carefully planned to the last minute detail, and so I stand in this life, who I am, what I am, fashioned by the hand that made the trees, the flowers, the fires, the waters, each for its own purpose, separate together to fulfill a greater, a greater plan. And with this knowledge, to the dictates of the Creator, I sing the songs. Forever constant in my being, and dance to the rhythm of your compelling music. Never a beat, a moment lasting. For I know soon, all too soon, I shall all leave this behind. Depart this world as I came, not of my own choosing. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, everyone. Yes, it's a celebratory occasion. And um, I also want to just add my voice to the big family in terms of um, do fully understand. And um, I consider myself family now, officially, right? Amen, right? And you can see I'm in a bright mood. And Valerie knows why I'm in a bright mood this morning based on that Thursday morning, praise God. I'm here to do a tribute to affectionately known as Madge, a tribute to Emery Madge Blake, affectionately known as Madge. This tribute is written in memory of Emery Madge Blake, a remarkable woman whose strength and love touch the lives of all who knew her. From the moment I met her in 1996, there about, I might be off plus or minus a year, her firm yet warm demeanor left an indelible, indelible mark on my heart. I must say that from that first visit and interaction with Madge, I felt at ease and most welcome. Madge was more than a mother to her children. She was a pillar of unwavering care and support, and to grandchildren as well. Unwavering care and support for her family. Madge was a first class and much sought after dress baker. Oh, yes. She made clothing for the who is who in Jamaica. Yet she remained so humble. If one should ever look at her client's list, it could easily be, it, would, it could easily give the impression that this is a list of invitees to a function at King's House. 
her dedication to providing for her children, even in the face of adversity, was nothing short of inspiring, inspiring. Madge's steadfastness and resilience served as a guiding light through life's challenges. A devout Catholic, and she always looked forward to fellowshipping with her church family at Stella Maris Roman Catholic Church. Though she may have passed on, though she may have passed on from this world, Madge's spirit lives on in the countless lives she has touched, including me. With her kindness and strength, her legacy of love and devotion will continue to inspire and uplift, uplift us, reminding us to cherish, yes, cherish every moment and hold our loved ones dearly. Rest in peace, dear Madge. We give God thanks for her life and the positive impact it has on her children. Your memory will forever be cherished and your love will never be forgotten. All right, praise God. Good morning, a reflection from Grandma's first grandchild, Tamika. Can you hear me all right? I'm just making sure that, okay, good, all right. So from Tamika, I've always known how blessed we were to have our grandma and especially how privileged I was to spend all my childhood with her. My early days were spent playing on the floor of Grandma's sewing studio, listening to her banter with talk radio while she produced her fabulous work. The many ladies visiting Mrs. Blake or Miss B conveyed such pleasure that it hardly seemed transactional. Over the years, I observed myriad interactions, followed her, followed her everywhere, relentlessly asked her to explain the world, and came to know her extraordinary mind. In any circumstance, Grandma offered an atmosphere of warmth, willingness, and grace. Thank you. Good morning. <clears throat> As a child, Grandma's past felt vast and distant with her introspective nature, but she entertained my curiosity with increasing detail. I learned she only looked forward and always endeavoring with an ideal balance of hope and reason, gratitude for capability and opportunity, and love of life and possibility. She espoused to do what you can when you can, with a mature perspective, her life becomes even more remarkable, knowing she had to overcome more challenges than we can imagine. Her story revealed a powerful sense of agency, self-awareness, and optimism I can only hope to aspire to. I believe Grandma found daily joy in the ordinary moments we take for granted. Evening walks, dinners, talking, time in the garden, being in the comfort of a loving home. I love helping her, Tamika says wherever possible, and she loved anything I did. Yes. We had a lean TV routine of cheated detective shows and local comedy. I cherished the vivid memories of her roaring laughter and uncommon wit. Life with Grandma is foundational to my sense of belonging, and I will think of her and speak of her all my days with boundless love, admiration, and gratitude. That's from Tammy. I think it's important to note that to command a room without saying much was unparalleled. And if she did speak, it was always with purpose and a keen intuitive sen sense of what to say and when to say it. Grandma was prideful, always making sure things were clean and in order. Grandma was a master at her sewing craft, a master at cooking, and a master at being a mother figure. Yeah, you can flip it.
She was old school, yet privy, and open to new, more progressive ideologies, and she was always, always willing to listen and or learn. As we reflect, we realize that she deeply loved all her grandchildren unconditionally. And it's a perspective that has become so much more acute that we have now all become adults. We have now the ability to perceive the depth of her love and care. And grandma's love and care was shown in specific ways, the specific ways that she cared for us. When Shari, our other grand granddaughter, went through an extremely difficult time as a young adult, Grandma left Jamaica to stay with her in Trinidad. And she was with Shari's side for many months, a calm, steady presence in the storm. So Grandma stayed with Shari, supporting her until she was back on her feet, mentally and emotionally. So Grandma was an oasis of peace in a crisis. She was always ready to be there for all her grandchildren and her, all her children and grandchildren. Grandma is found in the small details the small twigs of mint she would pick off the bush in the yard for us to have a morning cup of tea, which was a staple for us, um, Jordan and I in particular. Grandma is found in the memory of Barbara Gludon's voice wafting through the sewing room while she and Miss Henry worked to craft Grandma's ingenious designs. Grandma is found in the thimbles she would use in the sewing room, which I was fascinated by. And for those of you who don't know, a thimble is a small thing you put on your finger when you're sewing to protect yourself when you're using a needle. So I would collect them. Um, Grandma is found, Jordan says, in her top tier rice and peas and chicken and her cornmeal pudding. Grandma is found in her unique ability to work the yard and her ability to hold her liquor, unlike the amateurs around her. So Zori recounts how she would sleep with Grandma in her bed, and as she woke up, Grandma would playfully feel her legs and say, all I'm feeling is bone. This is just pure bone. Where's the meat? <laughs> so Grandma would turn out these huge breakfasts that probably were a little bit too much for Zori's tiny body, as you can see here. So, and then there was Grandma's affectionate name for me as a lanky young girl, still a lanky young woman, but Longilala. <laughs> And not least is Grandma's incredible elegance and grace as a woman, reflected in her style, her poise, and the way she carried herself. For the most part, we did not know our granddad as he passed away before we were born. And so Grandma was the woman Ayad, wielding her power with a quiet authority that did not demand respect, but commanded it. Um, Ashley is not here. I just want to bring some words from her. She wants the world to know that Grandma meant the world to her, and she loved her deeply. So we say farewell, Grandma. Thank you for all that you have been. And even as we come to terms with you no longer being here with us in the flesh, we are thankful that we've had you for so long and that your spirit remains with us, ever a steady and constant presence, even from the other side. Thank you. morning. Uh, let me first take this opportunity to, on behalf of my siblings and I, express our heartfelt gratitude and to let you know how deeply touched we are at the outpouring of love and support we received following the passing of our beloved mom. Our sincere thanks to those who called, visited, sent messages. Special thanks to friends who have traveled from overseas to be here today. Your expressions of sympathy has been a source of tremendous. Your expression of sympathy has been a strength, has been a source 
of tremendous comfort to us. The respect, admiration, and love we had for our mom transcends her going from this physical world. She was born on the 25th of March, 1928, to Lulian Williams and Bertram Burke, and had her roots in humble beginnings in Leeds, St. Elizabeth, where her innate ambition and desire for a better life instilled in her a sense of purpose and focus. Although she was deeply grateful for the love and care she received from her grand uncle and aunt, whom she grew up with, as a mere teenager, she moved to Kingston to pursue her dreams. There, she met and married our father, Reuben Blake, deceased some 43 years ago. The union produced five children, David, Colin, Hugh, Valerie, Hugh, and Andre in that order. All of whom are here today. Mom always said, I don't want to have to bury any of my children. I think she got her wish. Mom and Papa, Papa is what we used to call our old man, shared a deep bond and respect for each other and devoted their modest resources to meet our needs. Following the passing of our father, Mom continued as a family's matriarch, giving her love, guidance, and values to all her children and grandchildren. She also, she also loved and cherished her, our spouses and all our friends. Mom chose sewing and designing women's clothing as her path to realizing her dreams. From teaching herself in her childhood to sew without cloth and thread, stringing leaves together with grass straw into designs, to being one of Jamaica's most sought after seamstresses and designers. It's no ordinary accomplishment. Her creativity and consistently excellent work were well recognized. It was not uncommon to see the wives of diplomats, business leaders, government officials, and occasional glimpses of prime ministers and governor generals' wives, and other female members of their family at our home where she operated our, her business. Not to mention the featured gown worn by, Miss Jamaica, by, a Miss, by the Miss Jamaica beauty queen to 1971 Miss World pageant in London. I remember how we all beamed with pride seeing her full spread feature of mom and her work in one of our local newspapers. Mom, was also, mom also worked for a while as a designer in fashion industry in New York at the Bill Blast studio located on the 52nd floor of the Empire State Building. They marveled at her excellent designs for someone who did not have formal training. She was a natural. Even though mom had the had her permanent residency, you know, the green card. She was, she was, and was building a strong reputation for her designs. Her love for her family was a greater pull. She, she decided to return home to take care of her family. 
she chose family over a career in the fashion industry in New York. Even her style of dress and deportment in her sewing room was inspiring and her staff followed. She set the tone and standards for her business environment. From her creative hands, ten fingers, as she liked to refer to them, she sheltered and nurtured her children and taught us many valuable lessons. Discipline, hard work, creativity, attention to detail, uncompromising integrity, and importance of forgiveness. Qualities that in our lives have stood the test of time and served us well. She also showed us how to successfully walk between the raindrops with people of opposing interests and beliefs, demonstrating love, leadership, and being strong with humility and empathy. But how could we talk about her ten fingers and creativity without talking about her prowess in the kitchen? My wife marveled at my ability in the kitchen. <laughs> and for a while, I just could not understand it myself. Yeah. Everyone I cooked for was delighted at my cooking. And really, it's not just my wife, that's for sure. I boiled my cooking down my cooking ability down to, and this is no pun intended, to just sitting and keenly watching my mother in the kitchen. And it is not just me. All of us are good cooks. Andre, of course, is exemplary. But it was all transferred from mom to us during those watchful moments in the kitchen where we struggled to prevent ourselves from drowning in our mouth water. Mom worshipped her at Stella Maris until she was no longer physically able to do so. She was a woman of strong faith and always expounded her faith in God and encouraged us likewise. During her last years, we watched her slowly slip away comforted by her Christian conviction, the love and care of her family, and dignified to the end. She made her transition on March 7, 2024, at exactly 8 p.m., 18 days before her 96th birthday. She cared deeply for her family, made countless sacrifices for us, and opened the day by giving God thanks and praying for all her children. And she would do so by name. So she would call each and every one of us by name in her prayers. It would be remiss of us not to take this opportunity to honor the commitment the boundless care and selfless sacrifice that Valerie, our beloved sister, gave to our dear mom during her illness and advanced aging. Valerie provided dedicated comfort and care with grace and strength throughout. The entire family is deeply grateful for her tireless efforts and sacrifice. And we pray that she receives the blessings she so richly deserves. <laughs> Mom, your life was filled with good examples 
and a touch of audacity to think big and reach for the stars despite your humble beginnings. In the end, you went peacefully in your faith, surrounded by the love of your children. May you rest in peace and your light continue to shine through the ages from generation to generation of your offsprings. Rest well, mom. We love you. Cherish your memories. Thank you. My sisters and brothers, may we stand for the entrance hymn. Enter into Jerusalem, let us go to God's house. With the healthy and the sick, with the worker and the weak, let us go to God's house. Enter into Jerusalem, let us go to God's house. Come and with the God who reigns in peace, let us go to God's house. We go celebrate, we go celebrate, we go celebrate for oh, Israel. Praise the name of the Lord on high, praise the name The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Praise be God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies and the God of all consolation. He comforts us in all our afflictions and thus enables us to comfort those who are in trouble with the same consolation we have received from him. Blessed be God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. And bless the body of Madge with holy water, because her baptism, of which St. Paul writes, All of us were baptized into Christ Jesus, were baptized into his death. By baptism into his death, we're buried together with him. So Jesus Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father. We too might live a new life. For if we have been united with him by likeness to his death, so shall we be united with him by likeness to his resurrection. On the day of her baptism, Madge put on Christ. In the day of Christ's coming, may she be clothed with glory. Enter into Jerusalem, may we walk down there with the young and the old, with the little and the large, may we walk down there. Enter into Jerusalem, may we walk down there 
Swaying to the breeze with the God who reigns in peace. As we walk along down there, we go celebrate. We go celebrate. We go celebrate. So oh, is With your uncle and your mother, uncle and your aunt, let us go to God's house. Enter into Jerusalem, let us go to God's house. Run and catch the breeze with the God who reigns in peace. Let us go to God's house, we go celebrate. We go celebrate. We go celebrate. Oh, he's right. This candle represents Jesus the Christ, risen from the dead, the light of the world. Behold the light of Christ. Thanks be to God. As long as the day lasts, I must carry out the work of the one who sent me. The night will soon be here when no one can work. As long as I am <clears throat> the world, I am the light of the world. Jesus says, I am the resurrection and the life. You who believe in me, though you die, yet shall you live. And whoever lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? Yes, yes we believe that Jesus is the anointed one, the Son of God, he who is to come into the world. Our life is hidden now with Christ in God. When Christ, our life, appears, then we shall appear with him in glory. If we have died with Christ, believe that we're also to live with him. He who raised up the Lord will raise up Madge and us along with Jesus and place us in his presence. Both in life and in death, we are the Lord. Together, we know that Christ, once raised from the dead, will never die again. Death has no power over him. We know also that our own death is the beginning of our participation in the victory of Christ. We believe that God is faithful to his covenant, and he will give us the fullness of life on the last day. Let us pray. Almighty Father, you raise your Son, Jesus Christ, from the dead, so that we believe him to be the light of the world. May with him be brought the fullness of life in his resurrection. Grant, we ask you, that our sister Madge, who has left this world, might merit your forgiveness for the sins she has committed and inherit eternal life. We ask this to the same Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. David, David Blake. Good morning, everyone. It's my honor to read the first louder. Yeah, yeah. It's my honor to read the first lesson. Yes. 
it is from the prophet Isaiah 25, 6 to 9. On this mountain, the Lord of hosts will prepare all peoples a banquet of rich food. On this mountain, he will remove the mourning veil covering all peoples and the shroud enwrapping all nations. He will destroy death forever. The Lord will wipe away the tears from every cheek. He will take away the people's shame everywhere on earth. For the Lord has said so. That day it will be said, See, this is our God in whom we hope for salvation. The Lord is the one on whom we hope. We exult and we rejoice that he has saved us. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
a reading from the second letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. We know that he who raised the Lord Jesus to life will raise us with Jesus in our turn and put us by his side and you with us. You see, all this is for your benefit so that the more grace is multiplied among people, the more thanksgiving there will be to the glory of God. That is why there is no weakening on our part. And instead, though this outer man of ours may be falling into decay, the inner man is renewed day by day. Yes, the troubles which are soon over, though they weigh little, train us for the carrying of a weight of eternal glory, which is out of all proportion to them. And so we have no eyes for things that are visible, but only for things that are invisible. For visible things last only for a time, and the invisible things are eternal. For we know that when the tent that we live in on earth is folded up, there is a house built by God for us, an everlasting home, not made by human hands, in the heavens. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. My sisters and brothers, please stand for the gospel acclamation. sisters and brothers, the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to the crowd, all that the Father gives me will come to me, and whoever comes to me, I shall not turn him away. Because I have come from heaven, not to do my own will, but to do the will of the one who sent me. Now the will of, whom, of him who sent me is that I should lose nothing of all that has been given to me, and that I should raise it up on the last day. Yes, it is my Father's will that whoever sees the Son and believes in him shall have eternal life, and that I shall raise him up on the last day. My sisters and brothers, the good news of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus the Christ. Let's remain standing a little bit. Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia. Wait, 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 wait. Sorry. When we start to sing the Alleluia, it's like it's only Vila alone singing, all right? <laughs> and it's a time to rejoice in the life of the, the Amen. church. Amen. So let me put our voices together as we try that again, Vila.
we can be seated. One of the favorite times in the church's life is this season. Yes. It's a time to rejoice. Earlier, Deacon spoke about the Paschal candle, which is this candle here. This was lit last Saturday, Holy Saturday night. And it was done in the dark and it was lit by a fire and then as we process in the church all the candles were lit from this signaling for us that Jesus is alive and because Jesus is alive we draw life and light from Jesus who is our light our salvation so it's a good time to be and why am I saying all of this at a time of a funeral? Because it's also a time to rejoice. Because God allowed Marge to share life with us. Because it's in and through her, also life would have come forth. It is our hope and prayer that where Marge is even now, that she's with God. But this homily really is not for Marge. It's for us. Because there will come a time when we will go the way of Madge. So homilies like this, it's a time to remember who we are. And I start just from yesterday's reading of the gospel. Going back to last week's scenario where Peter, a trusted disciple of Jesus, he denied him. Peter denied Jesus. Peter said, I will not abandon you. And he did at the moment that Jesus needed him. But in yesterday's reading, they were by the seaside. And, Jesus, and Peter recognized Jesus. And yes, he jumped in the water going to him. Jesus didn't say, look, stay far from me because you're a sinner. I remember what you did. He didn't do that. Jesus took him as his own. The same Peter could be any one of us here who would have denied Jesus. Simply by our actions, the things we say and would have done in our past life. But God isn't holding it against any one of us because we have the time here and now to return to Jesus. We have the time here and now to give our lives to God whilst we have the time. And the truth is, looking at this number, I could do well with more members in my church. But I'm also very much aware that you all go to your respective churches. So we're not talking about Uno. <laughs> I'm talking about the ones who don't go to church. There's space here, 6 p.m. this evening, 7 a.m. tomorrow, and uh, 9 a.m. So any one of them, you're most welcome. And if you come, I'll give you a prize. You'll sit at the front of the church. <laughs> but, <laughs> but the truth is, it's a time to rejoice. I remember going to see Marge. But what struck me more about Madge was not so much Madge. It was her daughter. She spent the time she cared. And even when Madge was seemingly out when I was there at times, she was the motivator and pumping her up and said, Mom, guess who is here? 
and she was helping her to, to give life and to, to, to show up. We need people like a Valerie. That in the midst of the, the strife, in the midst of those down moments of life, she is there bringing life to the other. That's what church, that's what family, that's what life ought to be. That in the moments when things seemingly not so right, because you believe in that God and you believe that life is possible, you and I, we must do everything to fan in a flame that gift that God has given. And so yes, it's also a moment of forgiveness. Families coming home. Families also realizing that in the midst of their homecoming, while it is good to see our family members, we know that it's not the best of occasions because someone whom we love is dead. But it's in our coming, we're able to look the beyond and realizing that Madge would truly want this of us. I was also very happy that in, in the tributes that my, Valerie was also mentioned because she stayed home. And the other children realized and recognized and appreciated that. Things like these we must say aloud. Don't wait for any other moments. Say it whilst we can and appreciate and embrace the other. Many a person is today, unfortunately, they die without hearing, I love you. Jesus, having risen from the dead, he came primarily to usher a people to God. Because he knew the time will come when you'll not be here. And so he will need his disciples, his followers, to continue that proclamation of being the Christ for the other. Today more than ever, we live in a world that it's seemingly in chaos. What would normally seemingly happen in the past is seemingly going strange. Like yesterday, for example, the world seemingly turned upside down because there was an earthquake in New York. That never happened according to them. The world that we know is changing. What remains constant is the love of God for us. So whilst all these things are changing, and then I'm, I, I've not heard yet people saying, yes, at the end time, God will come. It's not for us to be caught up in the end times, really. It's supposed to be caught up in the now, preparing our lives for that encounter, that encounter with God. But then people will say, give me salvation, but not yet. Because in that not yet, they would want, as they say, they want to live their life. And in living that life, it means that they would want to do things that they can't do in a God house. They're young and they, they, they have that life. So they want to wait until they're old and can't do much and they give their life to God. But, as I've always said, COVID would have taught us that you're up today and gone tomorrow, whether, you, whether we are young or old. So don't put your life on hold to be in service to God. But it's for us to truly live that life in God. I think on Thursday night, I was kind of throwing words at my members. Because I was saying to them that during COVID, I'll tell you this story a little bit about what happened to the Catholic Church during COVID. We're caught off guard. 
We didn't have much social media as we have now. We have live streaming and all of that. And because the church was closed, many churches, only limited numbers could have come. People just hoping and anticipating to be in church, that they'll go to any church that will have them in it, even sit in the churchyard just to hear the word of God and to receive Jesus in the Eucharist. COVID almost behind our backs, and we've gone right back to the norm. We now run after God and seeking for God as before. It seemed like it's only when disaster struck that we jump in and call out to God, and that is slavery. <laughs> That's slavery. We should not have things on our backs that we can serve God. But we, in these times of joy, we must be able to serve God and live. Let's not wait until disaster comes. Because when that music stops, that music continues in our hearts. I'm throwing stones now, actually. I think Deacon Peter Espute marry his wife because him knows that him can sing well, but his wife can sing. <laughs> and because of that, they complement each other. All right, here. <laughs> we in our lives, let us not beat down on the other because of what they don't have or what they have. But how can we use it for the greater glory of God? How can we appreciate the other in their own journey to God? That's what life is about. That's what family is about. One of my disappointments in look, reading and listening to the tributes is that I didn't get a chance to meet her in her heydays. Because from what I have learned, she was a beautiful woman who made excellent things and marvel at the things that she would have created. You know, nice that is. When you can look on TV and say, you know, I may make that. And especially on, on those who are wearing it, it gives a sense of joy and pride. Just imagine our God, who have created us in his image and likeness. Proud of us, happy for us. We in turn, because we're all God's children, we must be willing to do so for the other. Recognizing that all of us, we are God's handiwork. And because we're all God's handiwork, we don't need to wait on people to tell us we look good, yes or no. We don't need that. Because God has made us special. And because he has made us special, he loves us. He loves much to the point that he chose in his time to call us, to call her unto himself. And yes, we will cuss and we go on and on and on. But just like in the olden days, when there is a cricket or a football match in our yards, the owner of the ball or the bat if, them, if you and them get in argument, them take up the bat and ball, I'm gone, and the game done. But God, so we like that sometimes, we are complaining, but God is the owner of Madge whom he has created. And he sees it fit in time to call her to himself. And as one person a couple years ago when his mother died, he said, what are I going to do? I got it, Leonard, we know. So what are I going to do? That's true. What are I going to do? All we can do is to model our lives on the good that should have done. My hope is that somebody in the family would have learned to cook extremely well, like Madge. Somebody in the family can continue that dressmaking line so that that legacy continues. Let her legacy, let her love continues in 
how you love and show love to each other. For us as a community of believers, God in no way, in the midst of all that they would have done to him, he ostracized a people. Again, in, in other churches, not so much in the Catholic Church, there's a, there's a, there's a, a seat called, and not because someone is just coming and sit there and want to say that. <laughs> there's a seat in some Protestant churches that are called the back bench. That persons who think that they're not too right with God, them stay at the back. In the Catholic Church, we're on a back, middle, or front bench. You come and sit wherever you please. And so it is the life in God. God loves, God cares, and God is willing to journey with each and every one of us wherever we are, whatever state that we are in. God is willing to say, come. God is willing to say, come. Because on that sea, Tiberius the disciples were that night they caught nothing all night and Jesus said throw your your nets over and they caught 153 big fish signaling that the church a church of believers if we truly believe in and open ourselves to God's because if you don't open yourself to God, you question everything. Because these were staunch fishermen. How is it that this man who knows nothing about fishing God tell me to throw my net over again? Wham. But you see, when we believe in God, God's love and appreciation of us goes beyond reasoning. It goes beyond reasoning. And so for us, that God loving us in spite of who we are, we can't fully understand. Well, it's not for us to understand it, but it's for us to truly live and believe in this God who says, I am with you. I'll tell you a, group, I'll tell you a story as I close signaling how God loves us in spite of who we are. A couple of years ago when I used to work at an engineering company, and it was night shift, and everything that could have worked bad on that night shift, it did. Then going home, it was a, then it was a quarter million buses. So I'm standing at the back and I fall asleep. And this woman squeezed up herself and said, come, come, Sonny. I was never fat like this either. <laughs> come and sit. Come and sit beside me. And I was kind of reluctant. And she just dragged me down. And the next thing I know, she touched me and waved me up. Sonny, where about spirit it? No, she was the size of a woman too. The next thing I know, I was dribbling on the woman's breast. I felt embarrassed. She just took my money and just pushed my head right back on her bosom and I got right back to sleep. I could see God in that woman. Really not care whether you're dribble, whether you're wrong or whatever it is. What she saw in me that I needed rest. I needed that rest. God needs each and every one of us to come to him, whatever state that we're in, and he will give us that assurance, that peace, that each and every one of us needs. It's a God, misses and brothers, be honor and glory forever and ever. Amen. We stand for the universal prayer.
if we trust in God and have as our top priority to live a life pleasing to him, he will take care of us in life and in death. Let us then pray with confidence to our Father in our hour of need. Hear us, O Lord. Your response, hear us, O Lord. For the church, that you will bathe us with your mercy, so that we will have the courage to be merciful with others, we pray to the Lord. Hear us, O Lord. In baptism, our sister Madge received the light of Christ. Scatter the darkness now and lead her over the waters of death to be with you in the company of saints forever. We pray to the Lord. Hear us, O Lord. For all who mourn, that we may all be consoled by the strength of your love and power of your spirit, we pray to the Lord. Hear us, O Lord that Christ may look with love upon Maggie's family and friends and grant to them your grace, strength, and peace, we pray to the Lord. Hear us, O Lord. That all who knew Maggie, especially those present here, that they may all receive an increase of faith and hope, knowing and remembering that our time to die will arise, we pray to the Lord. Hear us, O Lord. For the faithful departed and those of our family and friends who have left this life, that they may be welcomed into your glory, we pray to the Lord. Hear us, O Lord. Let us pray the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Lord God, giver of peace and healer of souls, hear the prayers of your people, whose lives were purchased by the blood of your Son, Jesus. Forgive the sins of all who sleep in Christ, especially Madge, and grant them a place in your kingdom. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Fix 
submission, all is at rest. I and my Savior have been blessed, watching and waiting, looking above, filled with his goodness, washed in his blood. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. We now stand for the final commendation and farewell. Before we go our separate ways, let's take leave of our sister Madge. May our will express our affections for her. May it ease our sadness and strengthen our hope. One day we shall joyfully greet her with the love of Christ, which conquers all things, destroy even death itself. Our sister Madge has gone to her rest in the peace of Christ, with faith and hope in eternal life. Let's commend her to the loving mercy of our Father and assist her with her prayer. She became God's daughter through baptism. May the Lord now welcome her to heaven, and with all the saints, may she inherit the promise of eternal life. Let's now pray to the Lord for ourselves. May we mourn that it one day with our sister Madge, together meet Christ Jesus, when who is our life shall appear in his glory. Stool. 
you understand why she can sing better than her husband? <laughs> this is very good. <laughs> Thank you, Father. And gentle people. So, Father, into your hands we commend our sister Madge. We're confident with all who have died in Christ. She will be raised to life on the last day and live forever with Christ. We thank you for the blessings you gave her in this life to show your fatherly care for all of us and the fellowship which is ours with the saints in Jesus Christ. Lord, hear our prayer. Welcome our sister Madge to paradise and help us to comfort each other with the assurance of our faith until we all meet in Christ to be with you and with our sister forever. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Let us recite together this wonderful Psalm of Hope, Psalm 116. Together, I will walk in the presence of the Lord in the land of the living. I love the Lord, for he has heard the cry of my appeal. They surrounded me, the snares of death, with the anguish of the tomb. How gracious is the Lord and just, our God has compassion. Turn back my soul to your rest, for the Lord has been good. I will walk in the presence of the Lord in the land of the living. Praise the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit forever and ever. I will walk in the presence of the Lord in the land of the living. Please be seated.
we stand. And extend our right hand towards Madge's casket. We pray the following. Madge, may the angels take you into paradise. The martyrs come to welcome you on your way and lead you into the holy city, Jerusalem. May the choir of angels welcome you with Lazarus once was poor. May you have everlasting rest. Eternal rest grant unto her, O Lord. And let perpetual light shine upon her. May her souls, the souls of the faithful departed, through the mercy of God, rest in peace. Amen. There are two announcements before the recessional. For those who are going on to Dovecot, can you go to your vehicles immediately so we can have a smooth journey over there? Be led by Deacon Peter Espute. Following that, there is a repast at the home for those who are so welcome to join. Paul Beres, please come forward. Mine eyes have seen the glory of the coming of the Lord. He is trampling out the vintage where the grapes of wrath are stored. He has loosed the fateful lightning of a terrible swift sword. His truth is marching on. Glory, 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 hallelujah. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Of a hundred circling camps, they have hanged. His truth is marching. Glory, 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 hallelujah. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Sounded for the trumpet that should never sound retreat. He is sifting out hearts of men before the judgment seat. Oh, be swift, my soul, to answer him before the jubilee. Our God is marching on. Glory, 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 hallelujah. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Glory. Glory, hallelujah, his truth is marching on. In the beauty of the lilies, Christ was born across the sea. With the glory in his bosom, that transfigures you and me. And he died to make men holy, let us live to make men free. While God is marching on, glory, 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 hallelujah. Glory, glory. 